The 10 Brutal Truths About Owning a Restaurant. Hey, welcome. My name is Michael Tebow, recovering restaurant owner and caterer, turned author, speaker, coach, owner of DFY Marketing Systems, serving the independent restaurant community since 2008, getting you more new customers and getting your existing customers to come back more often, spending more money with no work on your part, serving you up a plate full of profits so you can have a better restaurant and a better life. So today on this edition, we're going to talk about the 10 brutal truths of owning a restaurant. So I'll give you a little context um, on how I came up with this and why I came up with this. So I'm a old restaurant owner from way back. Um, I had six restaurants, uh, independent restaurants, all with different themes. No, um, not at one time. The most I had at one time was two uh, because any more than that, it gets a little nuts because I had a really, really big catering business, uh, which is extremely profitable. Um, and I kind of did things half-assed backwards. Uh, I opened up my restaurants to help promote my catering business. Usually it's the other way around, but I did it kind of backwards. Um, so I learned a lot. Uh, and over a 24-year time span of running restaurants, everything from an independent pizzeria, which I started out with after I graduated high school when I was 18. It was a small place, had three, four tables, uh, mainly carry out and delivery. And I opened that. It was called Giuseppe's in 1984. And I bought it from this older Italian gentleman um, who really, really, you know, taught me a lot uh, in a very short period of time, like a week uh, on the pizza business. Um, so it was kind of like, you know, the trial and error, trial by fire, whatever you want to call it, uh, that I became a restaurant owner. And being a restaurant owner doesn't come with like an instruction manual, right? The, there's no classes that I took. Uh, there wasn't, you know, a, a manual that told you how to manage employees, how to market your business, uh, cost control. I mean, there's a lot more tools out there nowadays and I actually teach at the local community college and the culinary arts department for students that, you know, um, want to learn how to open up their own restaurant and the ins and outs. So that's kind of the context. Um, I actually wrote this at 4.30 this morning. So when it depends on whenever you're watching this. Um, I get these ideas stuck in my head and I get up and I got to get them down on paper uh, because I think you're going to find these interesting and also helpful. Uh, now, they're not meant to be negative. They're meant to be realistic. And I call myself um, a cautious optimist. So I'm not pessimistic and I don't like to dwell on the negative. Uh, but I am, I do embrace reality. And it's that old saying, right? Um, expect the best, prepare for the worst. Uh, you don't want to be caught without a plan. plan. Not just plan A, plan A, B, C, and D. Um, my good friend, Mr. Rory Fat, taught me that to always have a backup plan near backup. We used to do large seminars together and he always had like three or four backup plans if something went wrong. Um, so always have a backup plan. That's good. But th these aren't meant to be negative. They're meant to, you know, um, tell you what is important with being a restaurant owner and things that you really need that are important that you need to pay attention to. Now, I'm going to do two podcasts. The first one is The Brutal Truths of Being a Restaurant, which a lot of you are going to go, yeah, yeah, that's really true. I get that. And then the second part of this is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, The Ten Commandments of Owning a Restaurant. Okay, so we got The Brutal Truths. That's this episode. And then we're going to have The Ten Commandments. Um which, you know, please don't email me. I'm not trying to do anything religious. Uh, it's just that's a really captivating headline. And I am a shameless marketer. Um, so uh, I'm sure if you've seen my stuff, you listen to me or watched my videos, you know I love doing this. I love helping independent restaurants make more sales with no work on their part. And I'm a shocking, shameless marketer. 
So let's jump right into this. The 10 brutal truths of owning a restaurant. Okay, number one, the first brutal truth of owning a restaurant is owning a restaurant isn't a job. It's part of who you are. So it's not like you can just quit being a restaurant owner, right? Um, once you're a restaurant owner, it's in your blood. And you'll always look at uh, businesses and restaurants that you go into and opportunities as from that point of view, as a restaurant owner. Don't fight it, right? That's who you are. You can't get into this business and be successful if you don't love what you what you do. It's that, um, oh, that Tom Cruise movie, right? Um, you know, uh, uh, Tobey Maguire, right? His sales mentor said you have to love everybody if you want to sell anybody. You know, it's the same thing. You really have to love serving other people to own a restaurant. So it, it, it's not a job. You know, when people ask you what your job is, um, it's, it's part of who you are. It's your makeup. You love to serve people. Uh, you love to make people happy. You, you work to see the smiles on their faces. Uh, I equate owning a restaurant and serving people food is such a personable thing. Did you ever think about that? Uh, th there's only, you know, like one or two other professions that, you know, you're nourishing someone's body, their soul. You're creating, you know, this experience. You're making memorable experiences happen for families. I mean, where's the number one place that most people get engaged or celebrate birthdays or anniversaries, um, life and death? are at restaurants, right? It's a pinnacle cornerstone of our society. Um, it's a really, really important career. And I've never known a restaurant owner, independent anyways, let me preface that, uh, you know, an independent restaurant owner that, um, you know, didn't embrace it as their life. It's not their job right? They just don't, you know, clock in and clock out. That's not what we do. Um, so owning a restaurant is a job. It's a part of who you are. And you won't, you won't stop being a restaurant owner. Trust me. I sold all my restaurants back in 2008 and I'm still a restaurant owner. I still view things. I'm still helping restaurant owners. It's just a part of who I am. It's, I, I love to cook. I love to entertain. I love to cater. I still help uh, some of my local clients, you know, with their catered outs. So it's just a part of who you are. So get over it. It's who you are. Uh, number two, nobody cares more about your restaurant than you do. Okay, I hate to tell you that. I hate to break it to you, be the bearer of bad news. Uh, but no one's going to care more about your restaurant than you. All right, it's it's your baby. It's your child. Um they, they just don't have the same commitment, right? You put your blood, sweat, and tears. You might have put up your house. You might have put up your you know, kid's college fund. You might have made a lot of sacrifices. You might be going through a tough time right now. Um, but you got to understand, nobody cares more about your restaurant than you do. You have to use that. You have to understand that. You have to understand people's limitations. You can't treat them all as an owner. You want them to be owners, uh, but the reality is they're not going to care as much as you do because it's not their business, it's not their restaurant, all right? And that will help you set expectations and how to, you know, the key is, let's face it, the trick, we have a lot of employees, right? Restaurant owners have a lot of employees because, you know, the hours, you need a lot of people to run a restaurant. Um, it's employee intensive. The profit margins are really low. Uh, and the trick is to be able to find people that you can trust, that you can motivate to get to do the things that you need them to do so you don't have to because you can't do everything and be everywhere. All right, but remember, no one's going to care as much about your restaurant as you. Remember that. Uh, number three, you will always be a restaurant owner even when you stop. Embrace it. Embrace it and use it. I mean, you're like a celebrity and that's kind of the fun part, right? Everybody wants to rub elbows with the owner of the restaurant. Everybody wants to know the restaurant owner. Everybody wants preferential treatment because, hey, I know the owner. And it's a great marketing technique, especially if you can magnify that, um, you know, through electronic media, social media, 
um, emails. A lot of people feel like they know me uh, personally because, um, you know, through social media, through emails, through videos, through podcasts, you know, depending on however you're consuming this content that I'm creating. Uh, but it, that's a wonderful thing. Um, but you, you're never going to stop being a restaurant owner. Like I said, I sold my restaurants years and years and years ago, and I'm still a restaurant owner at heart. That's just the way I am. That's why I got into the marketing business so I can help restaurant owners because you crazy restaurant owners are my people, my tribe, and I love you, and that's why I do this. Um, it's a ton of fun. I really, really enjoy what I do. Number four, this one is uh, kind of personal and yeah, I've taken a lot of uh, gruff for this over the years, um, and it's kind of a fun one. Number four, you will never be able to eat out and not analyze everything. Do you do this when you go to a restaurant, especially corporates? And I love going to corporates because when you go to corporates, you can learn different things and steal and deploy them in your own restaurants because they're really, really good at systems. But can you go to a restaurant? I don't care if it's an independent or a corporate breakfast, lunch, dinner, can you just go and relax? I mean, that's really hard to do for a restaurant owner is go into another restaurant and relax. That's the same thing with any other profession, right? A mechanic, like if they took their car to another auto repair shop, they're going to analyze and criticize everything. We do the same thing with restaurants. The, the thing is, there's so many restaurants and you take other people with you and then you're the one sitting there just watching Right? You're watching, learning, analyzing, trying to figure out what the heck's going on. You know, how can I use that? They're not doing that right. They didn't bust that table. You know, I've been waiting too long for my check. They don't have four walls, you know, um, marketing in the restaurant. All different kinds of things. So when you go out, try to relax, but just let people know. I used to let people know before I went out if they didn't know what I did. Listen, I'm a restaurant owner. I'm probably gonna analyze everything in this place when we go out. Um, but you still have fun. Everybody, you know, has fun. So relax, have a good time, enjoy yourself. Number five, this is a sad, sad truth. And this applies to really any business, but number five, your suppliers will lie to you. I'm sorry. That's just the reality of the, you know, marketplace that we live in. It's been that way. Um, it's getting a lot worse. So find the good ones and hold on to them, okay? Because having a good supplier, and I'm not talking about Meisel, Cisco, the Death Star. I'm talking about local you know, suppliers, but you need a good rep. One of the best examples that I can use is POS systems, right? Your, the POS systems is only good as a support and the rep. So look, if you don't have a rep that you like, get another one um, You know, if you like the company uh, because suppliers... Man, you know, a lot of them are just, you know, salespeople that are in it for themselves. You want people that view you and your business as a partnership. And when you find them, I had this awesome sales rep um, from Sexton way back. And remember, it was U.S. Foods. And then, you know, it's morphed. I don't even know what the name of the company is now. But he was awesome. Um, and he saved my butt plenty of times. You need suppliers that you can count on to make your life easier, make your business more profitable, ones that are looking out for you. Now, you don't want to, you know, beat them up every week. You know, you don't want to treat them disrespectfully. Uh, you need to treat them with respect, uh, you know, and treat them as a partner because they are a partner in your business. All right. Number six this is probably the scariest one on the list. And you already know about it. I don't have to tell you, but your employees will lie to you, just like your suppliers, right? Oh my goodness, no. Say it isn't so. Employees lie. You know as well as I do. You've probably been in the business long enough. You've been in the business more than a month. You know employees lie, okay? Find the good ones and hold on to those, all right? That's very important because, you know, if they're lying to you, that means they're lying to your customers. They're probably lying to the other employees, um, it's hard to trust somebody that doesn't tell the truth. You want people that you can trust, uh, that are going to respect you, respect your business, because your business is your livelihood. It's your life. They're out there representing you. And I don't have to you know, beat this one with a dead horse, but if you have an employee that's a problem, 
get rid of them, right? And I know what the excuse is. I don't have anybody to replace them. I'm going to, yeah, well, find somebody really quick, which I, this is why I tell everybody, um, we have our, you know, hiring, you can uh, get information on it on our website, all different types of hiring articles. You should always be in a constant state of looking for good employees. And there's, you know, a bunch of different techniques you can do uh, to manage that and keep them, you know, in a file and what to give them when you see them out. Because good employees are hiding everywhere, not just in other restaurants. All right. Um, So your employees are going to lie to you. And I always thought, you know, if you had one of crazy excuses of why they couldn't show up for work today, leave it in the comment section. I'm actually thinking uh, when I have more time about writing a book on the best excuses uh, a restaurant owner heard for calling off work, right? Because I've heard some really, really fun and creative ones, um, but it's still lying, right? And we don't tolerate that, and you shouldn't tolerate that as you know an owner of your business as well. Um, number seven. Nine to five, Monday through Friday, does not apply to you, right? Now, I mean, you don't work nine to five. You don't work Monday through Friday. Your busiest times on the weekends. Um, So I do have restaurant owners that have figured it out that are working banker hours, 20, 25 hours a week because they have the systems in place. But 99% of restaurant owners do not work nine to five, Monday through Friday. Um, I work six days a week when I own my restaurants. I did work a lot on the weekends. I typically took, you know, um, Tuesday or Wednesday off uh, because I did a lot of catering on the weekends as well. But I like being there on Friday and Saturday because it was fun. And I love to expo and, you know, run the floor and meet and greet and talk to, you know, customers. If you enjoy that, great. If you don't, figure it out, you know, and hire somebody that, you know, will be there running it. But you know as well as I do, Owning a restaurant, it's not a Monday through Friday, nine to five gig, right? Um, you're there uh, typically, you know, at night because that's when the majority of your business is. I'm not going to get into that one too much. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, number eight, you will miss most of the holidays because of your restaurant, right? I mean, I was open 364 days a year. The only day of the year that I closed my restaurants was Christmas. And that's because I couldn't sell booze. <laughs> if I could sell booze on Christmas, one year I contemplated doing catering pickups, but I was like, you know, I'm not going to do that to my staff. Um, you know, you should have, you know, if you can rotate out with managers, but, you know, you, and so what do you do as a restaurant owner for the holidays? This is what I did, brought my family in and they loved it. And I got to celebrate with them. You know, yes, I was working. I had to get up, uh, you know, from the table a couple of times, Um But it was fun. It was a lot of fun to have everybody come in and celebrate with me for Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, whatever the occasion was, Easter. Um, These are really, really good, you know, money um, sales days, right? So what you can do is obviously celebrate the day before, the day after, the weekend after, the month after, whatever you want to do. Uh, but you will miss most of the major holidays if they're at somebody else's house uh, because that's the nature of the beast. Uh, number nine, this is important. Please listen to this. This is you know super important. Your restaurant isn't isn't your life, but it does feel like your child, like you gave birth to it, right? Because opening up a restaurant, I opened six of them up from scratch. They were all closed. I never bought an open running restaurant. Um, there's so much that goes into it uh, because it, you know it's heavy on equipment and inspections and you know ADA rules and um, you know you're always always over budget. Uh, so it feels like you birthed this restaurant, right? But it's not your life, and it shouldn't be your life. You need to have a life outside of your restaurant. Uh, you know, take a day off a week to recharge. Turn that phone off. They'll figure it out. They will figure it out. You probably have people right now. I know it's hard to let go, but you need to let go at least one day a week. You will be a more successful restaurant owner, a business person, happier, healthier, live longer. I want that for you. Figure it out. 
You need to take a day, a week off at minimum. You can take two off, great, right? That's awesome. But your restaurant isn't your life. But I get it. It does feel like your child, all right? And that's never going to go away. Just embrace it. But you need to be able to shut that off, you know, and get away from that at least one day a week. Now, number 10, this is one, This is a mindset. Um, owning a restaurant is one of the hardest things you will ever do, okay? And if you make it, nothing can stop you. If you can figure out how to make it owning a restaurant with all those employees, with the economy, with the amount of customers you put through, you put through more customers in your restaurant than 99% of the businesses in your town. I guarantee it. We used to put through 2,500 um, you know, customers a week at some of my restaurants, 3,000 at the bigger ones. Um, I've had weeks where we've put four or 5,000 people through, right? It's... It's, it's a very labor, um, cost, equipment-centered business, all right? It's a business of dollars and cents, more cents than dollars, right? Uh, but it's hard. It's not easy. Give yourself a pat on the back. Look back on your wins. Um, take stock in what you've accomplished. If you're turning a profit, you're doing better than 90% of the independent restaurants out there today, they're just surviving. They're just getting by. If you're turning a profit and you're successful, you can do anything. You can do anything. And I know some of you are stubborn and, you know, are just, I'm going to make it. I'm going to do whatever it takes. If I got to work 120 hours a week, that's what I'm going to do. Trust me, if you can make a restaurant work, you can make anything work in your life, okay? But don't kill yourself doing it. All right, take stock in what you've accomplished and what you've done and keep a journal. I keep a daily journal, you know, when I own my restaurants and look back on it at the beginning of every year. That's what I used to do or every quarter. You know, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? But give yourself rewards. Um, that's one thing a lot of restaurant owners forget to do, right? You had the best week ever. This holiday season was fantastic. You, you know, you read my blogs, you planned out your marketing, uh, your Black Friday sale, your Cyber Monday, no peaking, you know, everything's humming. You had the best holiday season ever. Catering's going nuts right now. I mean, everybody after COVID like wants a party, wants catering. This should be a stellar season for you. In January, right, kick back and take a look and see what a great, awesome job you did because owning a restaurant is not easy or for the faint or weak of heart, all right? But if you can be successful owning a restaurant, you can be successful pretty much doing anything in life. Isn't that a nice thought? So if you enjoyed these 10 brutal truths about owning a restaurant, leave me a comment, shoot me an email. I just want to say thank you so much to allow me to be a part of your business, your community. Hopefully what I'm doing is helping you. And again, remember the second part of this is the 10 commandments, which you're going to love those. Um, that'll be the next podcast and video um, that I'm going to shoot here shortly. But I just want to say thank you again so much for listening to the DFY Restaurant Revolution and let us know how we can help you. And you can head over to our website, dfymarketingsystems.com, systems with an S, and you can find all sorts of great information, articles, and how-to guides, uh, review scorecards. There's even an opportunity for a free customized marketing plan with one of my DFY restaurant marketing experts. And this isn't a sales pitch. I wouldn't do that to you. And it's customized to your restaurant. And remember, if you're not part of our DFY family, please subscribe. And like I said, leave us a comment or review. We appreciate it. Keeps us fighting the good fight to help you create the restaurant of your dreams. I hope you have an unbelievable day.